to the ABC Podcast. Always be cool. The show where your host, DC and BK, showcase your local business and real estate pros going gangbusters in leadership, community involvement, and just being cool. Here are your hosts, serial entrepreneurs, mortgage experts at Summit Lending, and partners in crime, Darren Copeland and Bobby Kerr. All right. Hey, everybody. This is BK and DC coming to you live from WD Studios. That's something like <laughs> You're listening to the Always Be Cool podcast. The show brings you the good in the community, not all that bad stuff going on in the world. And of course, the good in your local uh, local area. So today we're talking about yes. us. We're talking. It's our favorite subject. It is. <laughs> We're awesome. Just ask us. I know. It's so much fun. We're talking about DC, talking about BK, learning some more things about us, discussing some personal questions, off the wall topics. And of course, the awesome stuff we love with entrepreneurial hacks, which can help anybody in any industry or genre of work. So let's just jump right in. Let's do it, man. No telling what's going to come up today. Who knows? Right. We have a little bit of a script and questions that we want to ask, but I'm sure we'll get off topic exactly. a couple of times. So Hands down. let's just kind of start in the personal realm, which will be funny to see if we actually like are going to ask each other the, the same, same questions, questions, right? And finish each other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> because we're so awesome. The, the color of shirt you're wearing is blue. <laughs> oh my God. All right, man, you want to go first? Yeah, let's do this. All right, cool. All right. So DC, you're really successful. You've built your business over decades, right? Sometimes things aren't always great. Not everybody's your champion. Not everybody is right. your your cheerleader on the side of the, the sidelines, right? With pom poms. What's an insult you've received that you're proud of? Man. By the way, <clears throat> there's so many for our watchers and listeners, the millions and millions of people. We do not know the questions that we're going to ask each other. So this is not scripted. In that, right. This in that is totally room. off the cuff. Okay. Off the cuff. So, right. so what, what's, what's the biggest insult, insult you received that you're actually proud of? Man, that's a tough one. Well, you know, one of the words that always gets us fired up is lucky, right? Like <laughs> you're so lucky. That's kind of like a backhanded insult, right? Sure. Because people, you know, we have these posters around the house or around the office and the house where you have, uh, you know, the iceberg. And it shows the success and it has all the stuff underneath the water that no one ever sees, you know, when it comes to, you know, setbacks, denials, getting turned down. Sleepless like, nights. Yeah. The 3 a.m. Yeah. Right. When we wake up all the time uh, talking about stuff. So, man, the the insults, you know, a lot of times when we reach out to our, our database, remember what I first told you when we first hooked up and we're like, hey, we're going to send this out to our database and people that we yeah. want to work with. And we're going to get some, some things that are kicked back to us, like on Christmas day, (laughs) we had a bunch of those come out. I think that's when you really know that things are working. Cause if you get those little insults, you just can't take them personally. Right. It's just part of the game. Not everyone's going to be happy for you. And at least, you know, you're trying. So, you know, whether it's us or the people that are on our team is to never get down about those types of comments, because those people are going to come back at you. And most of the time it's, it's about them. They might be in an unhappy situation. They might have some health issues. They might be going through divorce, who knows, right? So there's always going to be insults, you know, no matter where you're at. And as you say, you know, there's different layers of success, right? And as people see those different layers of success, they're going to reflect on themselves. So that's why we don't take it too personal sure. because man, if we screwed up or something and we did something really wrong, we'd be the first we ones to it. admit it. Yeah. yeah. We'll own it. Yeah, sure. But uh, I mean, just, just think about this, man. Cause you know, we're sports guys, right? I mean, how many times do you hear every week that uh, gosh, man, I just don't like that Tom Brady guy, that Tom Brady Guilty. guy, right? I've said that for 20 <laughs> right? years. That Tom Brady's just an a-hole. Is he though? Yeah. Or is yeah. he just really awesome? We're just, I'm just a hater. Exactly. He doesn't waste his time worrying about what Bobby Kerr thinks. No, not at all. To him, right? We always use the expression, lions don't care about sheep's opinions. Right. Exactly. Right? Yep. To Tom Brady, I'm a sheep, right? I'm a lamb. I'm all over day. here. He doesn't give me one thought or all the Dolphins fans in the world That's true. who hate the guy's guts right. because of who he is on the field. Because exactly. he's a lion. He's out there doing what he needs to do to succeed. So right. I'm and he's totally dialed in, right? He really doesn't care. Yeah. 
it's almost like he has a poster of a lion in his office with all these sheep on the outside of it. And he puts sticky notes of people's names around it, right? Who would do that? I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> all right. Well, that didn't take long to get into a Miami <laughs> Dolphin reference, did it? <laughs> a couple minutes in. These bobbleheads, I can hear them rattling on the table. I don't know. It's All probably right. Billy Butler. We'll make him listen to the show. Oh, Billy. Okay. Go ahead. You're okay. Up. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Bobby Kerr, what's your favorite childhood memory? Uh, favorite childhood memory. Ready for the second Miami Dolphins reference? I, dude, this this is your question, man. <laughs> this is you. Yeah. I mean, there I have a bunch. So I was very blessed to have a loving family. I had a mom and a grandma who raised me. And... Um, so life was pretty good. At least I was believed or raised to believe that life was good. So right. I wasn't inundated with negativity, right? Because right. we all know when you raise a kid that if they are knowing what's so bad in the in the house or in right. the world, then it can really Freak freak havoc yeah, yeah. On, on a child. So raised to think life was pretty good. So in that sense, I was definitely spoiled. But one of my best childhood memories, my mom on Christmas Eve, talking about Christmas, yeah. on Christmas Eve, my mom surprised me and we drove to St. Louis. At that time, it was the TWA Dome. Yes. And the St. Louis That's Rams, right. the now world champion Los Angeles Rams, were still in St. Louis. Right. And we took a road trip on Christmas Eve when saw the Miami Dolphins visit. Um, they were playing the Rams? They were playing the St. Louis on Rams. On Christmas Eve. Yep, on Christmas That's Eve. awesome. And Dan Marino was the quarterback and Don Shula was the coach. Shut and the Dolphins uh, won, so I got to see my you know childhood idol yeah. Dan Marino grow up, and they won. Or I saw it um, as I was growing up, and Dolphins won. And then we drove back, I think on Christmas, uh, the day after on Christmas, yeah, day. on Christmas yeah. Day, yeah, and uh, spent Christmas with the family. Which of course I had a ton of gifts that were all Miami Dolphins, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so that, that's a really vivid memory in my mind. So it totally unplanned, like you had no well, idea. Yeah, I had no idea. My yeah, mom obviously yeah. had a complete planned, surprise. And, uh, yeah. She was really good. She did that a lot growing up. But certainly, that was a great childhood memory. Were they? Was Warner still the quarterback for the Rams? He was not yet. Not yet. Okay. No. The, gosh, I don't even know who it was. Yeah, doesn't matter. No, because Marino was there. That's right. And he's a god. And they won. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Have you ever thought about like later in life, maybe getting season tickets for the Miami Dolphins? You know, Have you ever considered that? That's something maybe I should do. You should think about that. Oh wait, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty cool the story, Royal, though, right? That is. That's a great yeah, story. Thanks. Yeah, because we know do you want to tell everyone as we're on that subject, do you want to tell everyone how you became the Miami Dolphins fan? Sure. Yeah. A lot of people already know this story, but whenever I was eight years old, one of my childhood best friends, his dad started a football team in Blue Springs, Missouri. And I joined that football team and that team just happened to be the Dolphins. Dolphins yeah. And so that team then stayed together from age eight, basically, till we were playing school ball right. at 13, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the only little league football team I ever knew was the Dolphins. That's cool. So I wore that uniform, that aqua and orange. Heck yeah, man. The entire time I was growing up. So I just became a Dolphins fan and here we are. I've got a little, little Dan yeah. Marino sitting on the table. Isn't that funny? Like I literally, it's still in my closet, in my master bedroom closet. So I grew up across the street from the YMCA and Independence yeah. back in the day. And uh, on Nolan Road? On Nolan Road, baby. Yeah. Right by Truman High School. But uh, we were the Cardinals back when they were St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I had the helmet. And when he had a good practice, you know, he got the little stickers, stickers you know, yeah. like Ohio State or Michigan or something like yeah. that. But uh, no, that's cool, man. It's a very impressionable age. So Absolutely. I know you get that question all the time because you literally have your dolphin swag <laughs> to wherever you I go. My phone. Oh. They should really just give you tickets. They for, should. Right? I'm like the greatest spokesperson, especially in the Midwest. We should send them this podcast. We should. Right. Next time I'll wear my hat. That would help. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. Moving on. Let's see here, Mr. Copeland. All right. Here's a little off the wall, whimsical question for you. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Heck, you probably know it better than I do. Don't you? I know a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Give me one. You may, oh, maybe we should answer for each other on this question. Like I should say your pet peeves and you should say mine. Right. Exactly. That'd be good. All, All right. right. So you go. Let's see. DC's pet peeves. Similar to me. You yeah. can't stand when people are late. Right. Right. You don't like excuses. 
This is true. When people make right. excuses. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You might want to ask, should we bring in chili pepper real quick? Let's bring in my wife. She'll tell you. You appreciate brevity. So you like yeah. people when get to the point. So if they go way around, like I do oftentimes to get to the main point, that might make you right. lose your patience a little bit. Exactly. Those are three big ones right off the top. What I, am think I, I, I think I have amazing, amazing patience. I think I do. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an ongoing battle forever. I blame my dad. DNA. Oh my gosh. Your, your uh, facial tics that you probably don't even know you have right. is when I know that you're reaching your, I'm about end of done. your row. I'm about done. All right. I got a good one for you. Okay. All right. So Bobby's pet peeve is if people are not organized and don't have it on their calendar. Mm -hmm. Boom. Boom. Yeah, right? That's a big one. Including me. I know I'm in that group sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. It's certainly so, yeah. a big one. Yeah. Organization. And I think another thing for you is if people just don't have clarity, if they don't have a plan. Yeah. Right. So we kind of ran into that recently with uh, doing a bunch of interviews mm -hmm. as, you know, we're growing the different businesses and talking to people. And it's just amazing how many people out there just really don't know and they're not clear on what they want to do, whether it's personal or or business related. Yeah, right? certainly. I mean, if right. we, we we're very fortunate in the regard that we get asked for our opinions mm -hmm. on other businesses, and if somebody right. wants to grow their business, no matter the arena, right? You know, we've had uh, we've been very fortunate in that regard. But when people then ask us to help make their plan on how to be successful, you know, that can be frustrating because. Sure. We're always going to give tips and, you know, if you ask our opinion, we'll give it. Sure. Right? Absolutely. But yep. if you don't personally have vision and a uh, vision for your personal goals, right. I can't, I can't help you with your, your vision. Right. Right. If you right. don't know your personal core values, if you don't know your vision or your personal mission, right. I'm certainly, you know, we're certainly not going to be able to, to help somebody else with that. So, right. Well, I think both of you and I, we're, we're big givers, right? So, we don't care where someone's in the process. So let's take like a loan officer that's coming in. I don't, I don't care where they're at, if they're you know downstream because they, they're killing it for several right. years or they're just very beginners. Like we don't care where they're at. But I think at the end of the day, people have to be clear on what their why is. Because mm -hmm. until they have their why figured out, then they can't really move forward and figure out what the next step is. But if, you're, if you have that burning desire of what your why is, you're going to figure out how to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The, um, the start with, with why I think that phrase is actually kind of overused sometimes, but yep. there's different avenues, right? Like we're talking about what's your why in terms of motivation, mm -hmm. but then as, as leadership goes as leaders, um, whether it's in your, your family, you're the leader of your household or you're a leader right. in your business. With, when you start with the why, then mm -hmm. it also allows you to not be, defensive right. or it allows you to kind of go into a, maybe a tense situation mm -hmm. with a little more understanding and grace totally. because you're starting with asking yourself, okay, why did this person do that? Was it because they meant, you know, they had good right. intentions right? or they, are they just ignorant in this arena? So they just don't know better. Right. Where right. are they coming from? Right. Where are they coming from? Right. I, I think that start with the why is, is universal in a lot of ways. Yeah. All day for sure. It's good stuff, man. Yeah. It is good stuff. All right, your start your turn since I started the Okay. So here's a good one for you. So Bobby, what is the best compliment that you've ever received? Ooh, I had that one for you too. Did you? Yeah. The best compliment And I don't say get in a referral. <laughs> best, what you're gonna have to watch your elbows because John Mayberry is going crazy over here. I can't wait till we get John on the show. Right. John and Willie. Exactly. The best compliment I've ever received. Oh man. I would have to say when I get comments about the ability to get businesses off the ground mm -hmm. efficiently and successfully. Right. Yeah. I don't need people to tell me sure. whether I'm doing good in that, even though my love language is words of affirmation. Right, right. I do love when people tell me that. But I think being able to, for people to come to us, like we talked about earlier and say, yep. hey, what do you think of this? Just by people asking us questions to me, that's the that's a really big compliment. Yeah, they're saying without saying, "Hey, I admire you and I appreciate your opinion." Right. That's when you have the the respect of your peers. Right. 
and your colleagues, to me, that's the best compliment that I can get. And I, I'm not right. trying to make this work related. Oh, no, no, um, no. You know, because even like my my sister will ask me questions, even though she's an education. Right. Right. She's an educational leader. Shout out to Jesse. Um, <laughs> but uh, when she'll ask me questions about leadership, like that's the best compliment that she can give me. Right. So I, I would say that. Well, especially being a family member. Can I give you yeah. what I think might be one of sure. your best compliments oh. that you get? Yeah. That maybe you just don't even think about, right? So as many you know, people know that you're a musician as well. I think one of the biggest compliments is when you have a show and you have a ton of our buddies, you know, come, whether it's work, Royals Fantasy Camp, anything like that. I think a big compliment is those guys showing up mm-hmm. and supporting you. Right. Even though it might not be a verbal, Mm -hmm. verbal one, but everyone's showing up because the thing is, man, like whether it's singing or public speaking or something like that, man, there's there's so much anxiety and fear. And I think a lot of people look at that and go, man, that dude has enough guts up there to go up there and sing. And I would never do that. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because I know like myself, there's no way because you know, I'm not a good singer unless I'm the only one and I'm singing in the shower and I sound amazing. amazing. Right. <laughs> and then I'll be the guy at church that's kind of singing along. Right. But uh, no, I think people, you know, look at that in a different view. Right. And then they see, oh, and also, you know, he's a musician. Also, you know, he's got several businesses that are successful and him and DC do a, a lot of cool things. So I think that's kind of a a massive compliment that maybe isn't shown verbally sure. a lot. Yeah, that, you're right. That, right. It is that that is a very special thing when you're when your people you're when your people at yeah. right, your circle support right. you. Exactly. Even if it's nonverbal. It's huge. Sure. It's huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man, you're up. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> I like this one a lot. <laughs> Next time we should prep a little bit more. What would be the title of the book about you if your worst enemy wrote it okay title of the book so think about the people in your life the sheep right somebody <clears throat> that that maybe is a hater yeah or has at some point in your life not been a big fan of dc mm-hmm. if they wrote a book about you what would it be called and well, don't mention names of who i know the it. author actually <laughs> <laughs> there, there's one in particular that's a, would be a, it would probably be like several volumes <laughs> of books Kind of like Harry Potter or something like that. But going back to, I think, not that I think, I know that the the name of the book would be He's So Lucky. Mm. Full mm. circle there, going back yeah. to our first, our first question. First, yeah, He's So Lucky, right? But not knowing what, you know, seeing all the setbacks, you know, even yeah. as a kid going through sports and learning, you know, team sports, how to get along with your teammates. You how know, that translates into everything. And just failures and failures and, you know, the first, you know, year or so that I was in, uh, in the mortgage business, again, not making it about business, but not seeing all that in the very beginning and how you learn, how you get better, how you, you know, learn to treat people and things like that. And then, oh, all of a sudden he's just so lucky. Yeah. Right. And the follow-up to that vault to he's so lucky would be, she, her title would be, I'm so resentful. (laughs) Her autobiography. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, I don't know. You like that title? (laughs) So that would be our, a, well, I think the this is tying on to that. Our fav, one of our favorite quotes of all time: um, "The harder I work, the luckier I get." Right, right, exactly. And that's your that's your lucky, exactly. Right, you know, you know. I tell something. This is not a sob thing, but you know, man, if people really knew all the stuff that you have to go through to get to a certain point, man, some people would be up in a corner, just curled up in a ball. Yeah, right. And there are and, certainly days that I feel like I, I feel like I'd like to do that. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there you go through seasons in life, right? Where you're just like, man, what the heck? Is this mm-hmm. is this really is worth, it worth it? it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But then again, going back to your why, once you find your why, you know, whether it's your family or be able to take trips whenever you want to, and you know, any of that stuff. You if you want to hit all the MLB stadiums, you know, whatever your goal is, that helps you get through, you know, those days. Oh, right? Absolutely. Exactly. I, I think of whether, whether it's financial, like you said, or vacations or quality time with your family. I mean, there were, I remember less than a decade ago, you know, when yeah. I had nothing to my name yeah. and I just wanted to curl up into a ball and yep. say, I, 
I, what do I do? Yeah. I got nothing to do. Right. And you just kind of, mm -hmm. when you have your why yep. to get you to that next stage, whether it's the next day or the next week or the next month or year. Right. Once you know that and your vision becomes clear, right. Then it's a lot easier to trudge through for sure. Once you make it about other people and helping other people mm -hmm. and it's not all about yourself. Yep. So you don't have like a self pity party. I always say if you're having a bad day or you want to go help someone or that's the way to get out of it, right. go help someone. Right. Get, get out of yourself, go help someone, make yourself feel a little bit better. So I know yeah, if somebody they, paid for someone's gas right now, they'd go an extra long way. They would, right? It's a hundred bucks to fill up my I truck. Know. Every now and then you go, go through McDonald's and you know, you pick up the, uh, yeah, the tab behind the car you. behind you. Yeah, for sure. You're, you know, you're pounding yourself on the chest cause you spent five bucks. And then don't lie. There's that voice in your head going, man, I hope they don't order 40 bucks worth of food. <laughs> That's good. But no, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Very good. All right. Your, your turn. My turn. Yep. Okay, cool. This is a good one. I thought you might be hitting me up with this. All right. But BK, if you could go back and give your 18 year old self mm. one piece of advice, what would that be? Okay. So I won't do the quintessential answer of telling myself the acronym FANG, Facebook, Apple, mm -hmm. you know, Netflix. Google, like all that. Right. Uh, I won't say that answer, although that would have been nice. Exactly. Let's make it personal. But this one is really quick that I understand what my answer is. Mm -hmm. So the advice I would give to 18 year old Bobby is to ask myself before every major decision, like, is this worth it? And I'll elaborate a little bit. I think when we're young and, you know, whether we're hungry or driven we're just stupid, mm -hmm. right? We make decisions sometimes that come back to haunt us. And, right. you know, it doesn't matter really the severity, but it, like there are little things in my life that I've done that I still think about or have regret about. Sure. And how quickly can you recover from those things and forgive yourself? But I would say the advice for sure would be to always give pause before making big decisions. Right. And say, not only how does this affect me today, but how does this affect others? Others, All right? Day. That's yep. really, really valuable. And that's part of EQ, emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. that most of us don't develop until our 30s, to be perfectly honest. And, well, and some people never. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And I'll say that I'm 100% guilty that I don't think my emotional intelligence was developed until I was older than 30. Oh, you know, and exactly. I, I think that... Um, you know, relation, some relationships of mine suffered because of that. Mm -hmm. Financial decisions suffered because of it. Sure. Business decisions, you know, a career, everything. Right. Um, but now once, you know, I mean, almost 40. Right. But I've had a long time to kind of recover from some of those mistakes and understand that where I'm best served to, to be smarter than I was before. Well, you learn from them, right? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, you know, going back, if you could just realize that everything's not game seven of the World Series. Yeah pace yourself. Don't be impatient. You know, it's cool to make fast decisions. And if someone wants to go off, you know, for Vegas for a weekend or whatever, that's cool. But man, like major decisions, what, you know, girlfriend or getting into a marriage or something like that, man, just pace yourself, Pump right? Breaks, Pump the sure. brakes, man. I always right? consider other people. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the big one for sure. Right. Exactly. And remember that you can't change people. Yeah. That or fix them. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people that I'm sure that are going to listen to this and watch this that right. are still dealing with something like that. Exactly. Where they feel like they can change someone for the better, mm -hmm. but really you can't. You can't. Somebody's got to want to change it. It's true. It is. Sure. It is what it is. Okay. How about this one? And even though it's going to be a little work related, okay. maybe try to frame your answer not so much industry related, but we'll see. Right. So what's the biggest challenge you're facing in, instead of saying mortgage brokerage owner, but let's just say what's your biggest challenge you're facing in, in business right now and how are you tackling it? The biggest challenge, it's a great question. It's the biggest question isn't really so much of like a season and time that we're right here. The biggest uh, challenge is always people. Yeah. Right. So as we're growing this and continue to grow it to find the right people, you know, that we can train, have the heart, have the work ethic. That's the biggest challenge. So what we're doing is obviously the interview process, finding out more about their goals, their backgrounds. 
that type of stuff, that goes a long way. So I think that comes down to myself and even the rest of us getting better on the uh, screening process, mm -hmm. if you will, because I think you'd probably agree we've we got that down pretty good, especially in the, in the very beginning. Yeah, which shows the yeah. value of, of teams, right? Right, working in a in a really strong team. Exactly, exactly. Because like like we say, you know, in in any business, your you know your ceiling is your systems, right? Yep. So now that we're perfectly clear on that, you know, and and granted, you know, you and I, somebody told us that I guess we're hard to please. I don't know. I don't believe it, but that really resonated at home. So, you know, we think. You know, everyone else that is thinking, oh man, you guys are doing great or whatever. And and that's we are. We're super blessed. But you and I were always like trying to be as perfect as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So we're always raising the ceiling, our systems. So we're elevating that. You know, one of the favorite uh vendors, if you will, that we work with, that we send people up to and that we've been up to in Michigan, is uh man, it's it's all about the people. Yeah. Right. They've mastered the people business starts and ends that's it with the people on your team all day long and right what i love about that is you know your team you can relate that to your business mm -hmm. your family right your immediate circle your sphere of influence your friends right right you're an actual sports team everything everything it, goes the, around it right it, look in sports you've had the greatest athletes of all time on one team but they didn't they didn't win anything mm -hmm. Well, why is that? If you had the most skilled athletes in the world, but they couldn't act as a unit. Right. That's a thing. It's everything. That's a real thing. Right. No matter what business you're in, what sports you're in. Yep. Right. It's about team sport. You know, how many athletes have hung around for a few extra years because they're a good clubhouse guy. Yeah. Right. Well, those guys get hired every day. Right. They're still a decent athlete. But their careers were prolonged for a few years because they're a great presence. They're, they're extensions of the coaches at that point. Exactly. You're a coach, so you're One helping the a mentor. Mm -hmm. So I think when you have that outlook in, in your life, right? right? And obviously, we're not talking about coaching your friends and, and coaching up the people, you know, in your family. Right. But that kind of what it is, whether it's leading by example, I think that's a, that's a version of coaching. All day long. Right? All if people long. around our office or our friends see us, that we always act with integrity, right? Right. And we value relationships over transactions and money. Yep. We're essentially coaching up the people around us to say, Hey, this is what we value all day long. Right. All day long. And we always know, cause we had a, a recent thing of this in the last few weeks is, you know, having a new team member that just took the bull by the horns and was helping out another team member. And we're just like, Whoa. Yep. That was cool. That's that veteran in the locker room that's doing more than just playing on the field. Exactly. You're taking on an extension it, of the coaches. It, it's like it, it's like Alex Smith of the Chiefs. Yeah. Amazing guy, right? A really good quarterback, right? He knew that Patrick Mahomes was the next shining star and the franchise mm -hmm. quarterback of the Chiefs, and he poured himself into Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. You know, there, I was that's actually, a leader. They were talking about that on – the t on TV this morning. Were they really? That very thing. No. I swear on Good Morning Football. Okay. On uh, NFL Network. Yeah. And because there is a, an active quarterback, former quarterback of my team. Yeah. Who a couple of weeks ago said, my job is not to train up my replacement. Right. That's awesome. Now, I understand why some people might think that way. But if you truly have like a servant's heart. Right. And you lead by example and have servant leadership. Sure. And that's kind of a cliche term, but it's something that we obviously take great heart to. Right. But servant leadership is doing more than just working for yourself. Well, and you have to have abundance, you know, the attitude and the forethought of, of, of abundant thinking, right? Yeah. So, you know, poor Alex had that uh, horrific leg injury that he worked through, came back, but he still had a couple of years, you know, with the Washington Football Club. But, I mean, just a class act, knew it was coming. And uh, I know you probably remember this, but when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, there was a big movement for Alex to get a Super Bowl ring. Yeah. Cause right? he was essentially, he was one that of the coaches, coach, right? Yeah. He was a mentor. Right. So I don't know if that ever went down, but I mean, that just shows, you know, again, work ethic and heart. Yep. People, right? no matter what industry, industry yeah. that's no matter right. the industry, you're mm -hmm. in the people business. Yeah. All day long. For sure. That's a good conversation. That was man. That's good stuff. I'm glad I brought it up. <laughs> Wait, didn't I ask that question? I can't remember. I asked that question. You did? Yeah, that was your, your biggest challenge in business right now. That's a good question. And how question. are you dealing with it? Thank That's you. A good question. All right. 
This is a fun one. Okay. This is whimsical and off the wall. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. All right, Bobby. Yeah. If you won $10 million tomorrow, what would you spend it on other than giving it to one of your best friends that's sitting across from you right now? <laughs> All right, you win $10 million tomorrow. What would you do with it? Well, I, w- I try to live by some principles of after you earn, you save, spend, and give, mm-hmm. right? So right. I, I would try to break it up like that. Choosing where to give it would obviously, that's a, that's a large sum of money, right? Mm-hmm. So determining what would have the greatest value. Uh, I can't say off the top of my head where I would give it. Sure. But I would certainly give. You would uh, do a, your, you, I mean, you would do your recon. I mean, you would yeah. make sure it's going to the right that's organization. that's a lot of money, right? It's a ton that's of a lot money. different than 5,000 or 500. Exactly. Um, so I'd certainly give away a good portion of it. I would absolutely, I mean, this is a, such a boring answer, but I would probably put three or four of it in the quote unquote sock drawer, right? Not, yeah. not the actual sock drawer, but it would right. be saved. Right. Right. And partially invested. And then that leaves probably three or $4 million to go have some fun. Right. And live in the moment. Would you follow the dolphins around for a full season? No, but I would buy a luxury suite There you go. <laughs> in the 72 club, nice. which is like the crown club. Really? Yeah. They call it 72 because dolphins were the only undefeated we team in NFL history in 1972. Here we go. You'd get four four tickets, though, right? Absolutely, I would awesome. get four tickets, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I would spend i I would spend it. I'd buy probably a couple muscle cars. Yeah, yeah, and um, I'd probably expand our office. <laughs> exactly, because <laughs> we're there. <laughs> we're kind of bulging now. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I was I would give, save, spend, and uh, have some fun. You know, some fun like money it. for sure. Good stuff, man. Yeah. Would you go around and hit more fantasy baseball camps? If my body could hold up. No kidding. Yeah. Right. I mean, honestly, I'd probably do one more maybe, but that's right. about that's it. That's about it. That's about all this bag of bones can handle. <laughs> I feel you, dude. I gotcha. Yeah. All right, man, you're up. Okay. This is a good, this is good for anybody. So for those, again, you know, we get asked a lot about entrepreneurial questions and advice for people looking to start a business for the first time or they've already started it. But what's one of your favorite productivity hacks? as an entrepreneur, because man, getting off the ground and being efficient and productive is almost more important than the service or the product that you're selling. Right. So are you talking about like personal hacks or are you talking about business hack? Cause I've got a really good personal hack that I've gotten back into. I think they're synonymous. So I think when you have a personal hack as an entrepreneur, then it translates into being more productive as a business owner. All right. right? So, so I I've think, got, I got one for each. Okay. Cool. I got one personal and one business. Okay. All right. So as you know, the past, you know, 30 days or whatever, I've really gotten back into my morning routine. Yeah. Which is called your DC's morning routine. No, the color. Well, it's yeah. So green time. Right. right? So that morning routine is basically, you know, getting up, eating your breakfast, you know, protein shake, going to work out and out at, uh, you know, orange theory, which is, total. Yeah. Shout out Steve. To Steve shout out theory. discount. Let's go, bro. <laughs> but uh, doing that because it just, it completely changes your mindset. You know, you got the endorphins going, you feel better about yourself and you're ready to go. I like to call it putting on your mental armor. Yep. Right. So you're off to a good start in the morning, feeling good, ready to rock. And uh, you know, when you get out of the shower and get dressed, all your clothes fit and it's amazing. Right. Yeah. And then you get into your green time, which is completely focused time that you're doing money-making activity. So no matter what business that you're in, whether it's relationship building, you know, just thanking people, it's basically like an hour or two of gratitude and thanking people for, you know, supporting our business. And if there's anything we can do for them. Right. So by doing that, not diving into the email Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, always call it playing on offense, right? Because the minute that you dive into email or your reactionary mode, then your day is completely off. And you and I both know it's, 5.30 5.30 or 6 o'clock at night, just like that, yep. right? Before we even, you know, think about it, right? So that's one of my my personal slash business hacks there. My, so uh, my, before you dig in, can I ask a follow-up question? Yep. So what about someone who isn't necessarily an entrepreneur? Does, does following that green zone mentality, how can a person in a, in a usual, normal job, nine to five, how can they fit that into their 
daily schedule? You know, I think it's for for anyone. I mean, there's a great audio book or book. I'm, I'm big on audio books, you know, called Morning Routine. Dive in there and let, let's say even if you have a really cool job that you love, which is fantastic, but getting up and, you know, eating healthy, maybe you're reading, you know, a chapter of, of a book or a devotional or something like that. So you're getting your mind simulated, getting your exercise in. And then, you know, especially the, I like to take 10 minutes and just do completely just random stuff, whether it's, you know, checking on Facebook or checking on your fantasy teams, mm -hmm. seeing who you're going to draft for your, you know, your NFL, you know, fantasy team or anything like that. So I, I think it really comes up to individually, like what makes you happy, but just to have that little window of discipline on the daily basis, dude, it, it's, it's game changing. Yeah. It's game changing. Cause so like my person, you know, personally, a little insight on me is like business wise, man, I'm regimented and I'm all over it. Right. And then one of my challenges was, is like, because the, the businesses that we're in can be stressful sometimes, right? What? What? People get upset about money. What? But no, it's, it's very easy to cut loose, right? Sure. And, uh, and hit the happy hours and, you know, eat a bunch of junky food. And over time, you know, apparently gain weight. I, Weird. I don't know. That's what I hear. Eat bad, lose sleep. <laughs> no. Drink, exactly. you, you gain weight. Sleeping, sleeping like a baby now. I, bet. I don't have my 3 a.m. wake-ups anymore. But no, it, it translates to any industry. Sure. For sure. Okay, so the business one, before I interrupted you. Lead with revenue. Okay, so expand. So lead with revenue. So don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't get into a bunch of debt because you think that you're, you're spending money because you're going to grow the business, I've right? I'm guilty of that. Right. I mean, well, and again... You know, industry specific, a lot of loan officers will go and spend a lot of money on leads or, you know, partner up with someone and spend all this money and they feel better about themselves, even though the returns not really there, you know, go back to the grassroots, make the relationships, right? Everything's relationship, no matter what business that you're in. But uh, that's it, man. Just make sure you don't get in over your head. Don't get in debt, right? Yep. A little bit, that's fine, but lead with, lead with revenue Make sure that's coming in and grow at that pace that you're comfortable with so you don't end up like with some of these large mortgage companies that you see right now. Laying, laying everybody off. off. Yeah, yeah, it's just brutal, man. Even a, yeah, a big one today announced some more layoffs. But yeah. I think that's really a really important lesson. I'm really glad you brought it up because, you know, Guilty, my very first business I started literally day one of owning the business, I had $65,000 in debt. Yeah. Because I thought that all of these big, shiny new things were necessary in order to start a business, mostly because I was concerned with optics. Right. Right. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to people to say, oh, that's really nice equipment. That's right. a really nice truck. You must be successful. He must be successful. And right. I, I think that's a really, really easy trap to fall into. Yep. But okay. when you lead with the idea of, okay, in order to get this business, in order for it to be truly successful, I have to be profitable. Right. And just because you've got a shiny truck, you know, just because you got a nice trailer and you've got all this nice equipment. Right. What's your bottom line? How much money have you taken home? Yep. Are you providing for your family or are you continuing to go into debt? Right. In order for other people to think that you're successful, even though when you're sitting at home and you're lying right. in your bed, you're crying. And who cares? Because you've brought on so much debt. Right. And you brought it on yourself. And you brought it all on yourself. Yeah, exactly. That was a good point, wasn't it? I was. Uh, well that done. Was, it's almost like you're... It was like organic. Like you have some sage wisdom. Exactly. Sometimes I hide it. It was like you're an old man. Sometimes I'm going to hide it. I'm going to scare people. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's funny. All right. You want to do one more each? Yeah, you let's wanna, do it. Yeah, thumb through and, and figure out which one you want to Let's figure ask. out one more good one. Yeah. Right? I take it it's my turn. Yep. What's the one question that you wish... No, I, no, no, no. That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> First, I went first. <laughs> All right, ask it again. Sir. All right, Bobby. What's the one question you'd wish I'd asked you? Wow. And how would you have answered that? Man, this really was the question. I, I know was I see it. It's, it's right really there, highlighted. Yeah. What's one question I wish you'd have asked me? And how would I have answered? Wow. I should have thought about this answer since I was going to ask you. Can I go? To I'll, answer for yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, Bobby, I wish you would have answered, asked me the question of, you know, as a young age, what was it or who in your life 
influenced you the most to get you to mm. a certain spot, right? Maybe not so much influenced overall mm -hmm. in your childhood, but who was that one cheerleader in your life that you could look back and point to things and be like, yeah, that happened, that happened, that happened because of some things that one of your cheerleaders in your life did, right? Mm -hmm. So you're asking me the question, who, who might that be? And uh, without a doubt, and I had great parents, great mom, great dad. Uh, they got divorced when I was very, very young. And I had a really cool, we don't like to use the word step. Right. So we called it second mom, right? Step mom, second mom, whatever you want to call it. And you knew her, I did. right? And, uh, you know, back then, you know, spent, spent more time with my mom than I did with my dad and stepmom. But still, those times were so special because she was just like my biggest cheerleader. Like she saw something. It's like when someone sees something in you that you don't even see, uh, it makes you feel really good. So at a very young age, she was always like, Darren, you're going to amount to something. You're going to do really cool things. You're going to do this. And I'm like, cool. Awesome. I'm going to go ride my bike for a little bit and I'll be right back. <laughs> right. But I look back and there's just so many influences that I, you know, every single week I can go back and say, that's because of this, or that's mm -hmm. because of that. And, you know, you actually knew them very well. That's how you and I got introduced, which is a really cool story yeah. that we can share sometime. But, you know, the, the whole thing about being an entrepreneur and going out there and doing the best that you can, loving Arizona, you know, going and traveling, doing all that cruising, you know, all mm -hmm. that was things that were planted years and years ago. Yeah. Right. For sure. And then fast forward until, you know, I can still say I'm in my forties right now right. for a very short time. And, uh, it's just weird. It makes you, it makes you go back and realize how impactful those moments are as, as a young kid. And that's why I'm really conscious with our son, Drew and our nieces and nephews who are all rock stars to, you know, take that extra time with them. If they have big events, go take them on cruises, take them out to dinner, because, you know, the, you know, Liz and I are the coolest, you know, we're like the cool aunt and uncle, right. right? So they'll bounce things off of us or whatever, but really invest in them because I know when they're in their thirties, forties, fifties, and they have their own families and their kids, that that stuff's going to be passed along. You know, it's not about money and all that. It's about time that you invest in them. And then I've learned this from the Latin side of the family is when you invest time into those kids, it gives you permission to kick them in the butt. Yeah when they need point. it. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and just give them a word of truth because if you don't love them and you don't give them a word of truth and you're just, and you just don't really care, that's the biggest crime that you can do, you know, against kids like that. So sure. that's one thing that I always think about every single week. That's good. That, that influence that I had as a younger kid. So instead of answering that question directly, I'd like to just expand a little bit yeah. on what you said. So Absolutely. I think we have these different seasons of life where people affect us, sure. right? Either negatively or positively. And what you're talking about being like the world's coolest and best aunt and uncle for mm. you and Chili Pepper. Yeah, you're cool, right? But you've also been that kick in the pants when right. necessary, right? Correct. So I think back to single mom, my grandma raising me in a house of all women, right? Right. That was not always easy. Sure. So I had different people uh, throughout the seasons of my life who were kind of um, not necessarily, I'm not just talking as a fatherly figure, just authority. Um, but just authority mm -hmm. almost um, who could kind of help me along, build me up with the praise, like what you're talking about and gave me enough praise so that when I did need a kick in the pants, you know, they could get it. And I right. didn't feel like I was being bullied, you know, right. or, or they didn't like you, they didn't like me or didn't right. love me. It was just right. like, okay, they love me enough to where they can tell, you know, speak the truth to me. Right. So I think of, you know, in, Music teachers, yep. you know, really one in particular, shout out to Debbie Gray, uh, Daniel Young Elementary. Here we go. Right. Daniel Young. Daniel Young. Um, you know, the different teachers that I had, you know, of course I went on to teach and be an educator. So yep. teachers were a really big part of my life. Coaches. You know, I think of all the coaches that I had Huge. that built me on from sport to sport, but then taking those lessons again, full circle to what we spoke about earlier with team sports. Right. And if you don't have the coaches in place to teach you, you know, more, it's more than the sport. 
it's the the self discipline. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the it's the confidence. Right. It's knowing when to be a yell leader in right. the in the locker room or the dugout, and when to take a step back and let somebody else lead. Right. You know, all these things come because of the seasons of life and the people that teach us along the way. Business partners, obviously, you and I connecting. Right and being able to accomplish what we've accomplished, you know, lifelong best friends that we've had businesses with. So, you know, it's just really, really important that I think when, like as aunts and uncles or as parents or as coaches or, or leaders that you're always recognizing that somebody's watching, right? Somebody's watching you Mm -hmm. and everything that you do. And I know that that can be intimidating to a lot of people, Sure, but I think when you understand that Someone, I guess the better better way to say it is someone's always looking up to you. That's true. Right? True. And even if you don't know it, somebody is. And they're looking at how you respond to things uh, and how you pivot. Right. Right. And exactly. we certainly have had to pivot a lot in our exactly. lives. Exactly. Well, it's learning the positives and the not so positives. Right. Positives, right? Because I remember some baseball coaches at a very, very young age. That were just ripping us like no one's business, right? Yelling like, at the six year olds. They would be on the you know the the six o'clock news these days, oh, right? Seriously, for real. So I mean, that for me, I learned at a very very young age. Man, you you, you got to step it up, and uh, no one's there to save you. You got to you got to step up and don't even think about feeling sorry for yourself, right? Right. Absolutely. So I look back and I'm thankful for all those moments, right? Because oh, yeah. everything forms you know the good and the bad as you get older and you're figuring out like, this is how I want to treat people or this is how I want to conduct my life. And if you didn't have that, those other experiences in your life, you wouldn't know any different. Yeah. I think this is a good way to to put a bow on it. Yeah. It's almost like you're always trying to live, at least the way I look at it, I'm always trying to live like the greatest hits version of all of the albums of my life. Right. Like if I, if if your life are Mm -hmm. records, musical albums, Right. And think of the hundreds of tracks that make up all of those albums. Yep. You want to take bits and pieces to ac- to make your greatest hits album. That's really cool. And that's what today is. And yep. That's what tomorrow is going to be. And so I'm just trying to make the greatest hits album every day. Exactly. We should keep doing this. We it's like the greatest hits of, of DC and BK. Let's go. <laughs> so I can do a cheesy DJ voice. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the ABC podcast. We appreciate yep. you guys. Check us out on the next yep. episode. This Check was fun, on. dude. It was. Great job. All right. Good job, man. Instagram, Facebook. Yes. We'll tune in next time with some special guests. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks. If you are hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode. And for that, Darren and Bobby thank you from the bottom of their hearts. They hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please leave them a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you're listening. Please share this episode with others who may be interested in our community. Also, feel free to let DC and BK know which business or community leaders you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Get in touch in the comments or on social media. See you next time for a new episode. And remember, always be cool. This podcast is powered by Summit Lending. NMLS number 185081, Equal Housing Lender.